Let's play a fun game. What happens when Volvo decide to set up a performance sub-brand that only uses EV powertrains and uses all that amazing Scandinavian design language and engineering and also ethical materials? This is what happens. It's a genuine Tesla Model 3 rival and it's called the Polestar 2. And I think there's an aeroplane behind me. It's not, it's a six-wheel John Deere Gator with Merlin at the wheel. <laughs> So the Polestar 2 came after the Polestar 1 and the Polestar 1 is actually a plug-in hybrid two-door coupe sports car which I haven't driven yet that will come on a future episode but this is their first kind of more affordable mass production car this is their critical party piece really because this is going to hopefully take the fight to Tesla and talking of Tesla I think this looks bigger than the Model 3, but in actual fact, it's 87 millimeters shorter. And this side profile is quite critical because you can immediately see that Polestar have made a conscious effort. They haven't chased the SUV silhouette. They haven't gone down the road of the EQC like Mercedes or the Audi e-tron. No, they've said, we're going for this kind of thing. It looks like a saloon, but it's actually a secret hatchback. So the Tesla Model 3 has the, hat, uh, has the boot, you know, the saloon boot, but this actually has a more practical hatch, which I'll show you in a second. The other thing I love about this, this shape, Volvo design, Scandinavia design, is, is, is always quite simple but striking. There's this concave piece at the bottom of the door here and a really sharp shoulder line here and like frameless wing mirrors. They, they, they're very, it's very odd when you're driving the car, there's no, there's no surround to the glass. It's just completely open. So what is powering the Polestar 2. Well, this is the launch model, so it only really comes in one flavor at the moment. This is a 300 kilowatt um, power car. It's a 150 kilowatt motor at the front, driving the front axles, 150 at the back, so four wheel drive, Siemens motors made in China, and then it's got a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that doesn't, like a lot of EVs, it doesn't sit in the belly of the car. It actually sits down the tall center console and under the seats, and the reason for that, according to Polestar, will be clear when we get in it. So it's a five door. It's slightly higher off the ground than you'd normally see a saloon, and this particular car has the optional performance pack, and you can tell that from there, because there's bits of gold there, there and here. This is probably my favorite bit of the Polestar 2 actually, the back end. It's got these great kind of concave strange lights which go around the perimeter and they're all LED and they do some cool chasing. Polestar badge there with the two kind of arrows interpointed which look a bit like DS, the brand that Citroen says it's nothing to do with but it sort of is. But this is the important bit. That, because obviously a Tesla Model 3 is a saloon and that's kind of annoying for a lot of people, especially Europeans. And this addresses that problem. Polestar said they wanted to definitely make sure the boot had really easy, large access, despite the fact the boot's actually slightly smaller than the Tesla. This is a 405 litre boot, but it's got some cool stuff. It's got a divider and then it's got another bit down there and then it's actually got another bit at the front it's got a fruit albeit not quite as big a fruit frunk as the t3 hey google can you mute the navigation? Muted. Voice guidance. Thank you. 
Well, there you go. First things first. The inside of the Polestar, well, it feels pretty special. In true Volvo Scandinavian style, they have made a point of calling this the vegan interior. And there's been a bit of this used in Volvos as well. Materials that are much better for the environment, recycled fibers, um, low impact um, plastics and alternative materials. And it's bizarre because some of it has a much different texture to what you're used to. Apparently even this steering wheel cover is, is vegan vinyl. Um, I, I, I'm fascinated by it. I think modern Volvos have always had very interesting materials. So it's great to kind of explore these different levels on the dash and um, this headlining, which has a certain feeling to it, but it, it still feels premium. It's something that Scandinavians seem to do very well. Um, although the Germans um, have done it fantastically with the BMW i3 that's, that's getting on a bit in terms of age, but it does not look old at all. And it's used these alternative kind of materials. There is a bit of reconstituted wood here and you can get that in lighter brown. This particular car is optioned with quite a lot of kind of grey and uh, muted tones. But you can see this centre console is really high. Um, less like the Tesla, more like the Jag I-Pace, I would say. And the reason for this is because Polestar says the batteries live down in here and across underneath the back seat, so like a T arrangement. The idea being they put them here so that the footwells would still be nice and deep. There wouldn't be a false floor for the battery packs. And that often is the case in the back end where um, adults suffer with their, um, with their leg room a bit. I haven't been in the back yet. I'll go in the back shortly. So this feels Volvo-ish, this steering wheel. And this is Volvo here. And this really, this little selection of buttons of which, what, there's three, four, they're the only buttons. They're the only physical buttons and a couple on the wheel. Everything else is on this portrait um, tablet that's obviously been influenced by the Tesla 3. It sits kind of proud of the dash. Um, and this is the first car, this is a world first for a car maker to use the Google operating system. So this really lives and breathes on Google OS. Um, and as a consequence, you can use the assistance, you can, um, you can use things like Spotify through here, um, all kinds of stuff. And I've put it to good use, actually. I'm always a bit skeptical of stuff like this because to be honest, it, it, it doesn't always work, but so far it's been brilliant. Let me just try it now, now that we're on camera and see if it fails me. Hey Google. Play the Smith and Sniff podcast. All right, here's the latest episode of Smith and Sniff, the Ineos Grenadine on Google Podcasts. I mean, this is a great podcast. If you haven't already subscribed to it, it's fantastic. Hey Google, stop. Yeah, listen to this indicator noise. It's weird. It sounds like someone is clicking one of those little clickers. You know those little metal uh, clickers, like a fidget spinner type thing. That's what it reminds me of, anyway. You'll be able to get a good idea of um, of the chassis of the Polestar too, because the thing that I'm really wanting to get under the skin of is the Polestar 2's chassis. Now the one that I'm driving, you can tell, because I've got the gold seat belts, that it has the optional performance pack. That's a 5,000 quid option with 20-way adjustable Olin's dampers. Now Olin's are a Swedish company that makes suspension regarded as one of the world's best. But it's manually adjustable suspension, so not push-button, touchscreen stuff that you'd get on a lot of modern sports cars. You actually... I believe I have to climb under the car and tweak it with spanners if that's your bag. But remember, this is a steel car. The, the, the underpinnings of this are not, uh, it's not an, a ground up EV uh, as such. It's got um, chassis 
parts from the Volvo XC40. Now, I know Polestar say they're Polestar, they're not Volvo, but it's a subsidiary of Volvo, and I still think of it as Volvo. There's nothing wrong with thinking it's a Volvo. Volvos are fantastic now, they're better than they've ever been. So, but the one thing that Volvos have always been is very comfortable and perhaps not the most kind of sharp in terms of steering and in terms of chassis. This is unusually stiff. This has the optional Brembo brakes as part of that performance package, painted gold, nice calipers. But I'm actually, in this instance, I'm not really, I don't really know how good they are because I don't need them because the regen braking is that good. So that begs the question, how hard are you going to push it? Do you really need that? On the other hand though, compare this to a Model 3 Tesla. Teslas have notoriously weak brakes. The calipers, the discs, are, they're made of chocolate. And the other thing about Teslas is they tend to be softly set up um, whether that's for an American market or it's for more of a relaxed drive, but it certainly feels a lot more engaged than that. The feeling I'm getting from the Polestar 2 really is in terms of its interior and then in terms of the fact that it's quite focused as a, as a handling, engaging car. It's more Jaguar I pace it in many ways than than it is Tesla 3. And that's no bad thing because I really like the I-Pace. I think a lot of people discount the I-Pace because they just look at stats like range and um, you know the Tesla charging network and they, they don't give it a chance. But if you drive the I-Pace, it's a fantastic car and it's been out a couple of years now already. You know, it's it got there early and it is a ground up EV. 300 kilowatts, so 200, 150 kilowatt motors, um, 487 pounds feet, so it's about 670 newton meter torque 660, um, and it's punchy. I have to say, it's punchy. Top speed of this is 127. I won't be doing that today because sadly I'm not allowed. Um, which is pretty high considering Volvo caps its speed normally at 112. And I know it's not a Volvo, but it sort of is. It's quiet though in here. This one's got the, the panoramic roof, which I do like. It does feel so stiff. I'm not getting much in the way of body flex. I'm not feeling much in the way of understeer. I don't know whether having smaller wheels might make this car ride a bit better, but because this has got the performance pack, you've got 20 inch forged rims, and they're really good quality rims. Again, look, if you're gonna compare it directly to a Tesla, Tesla cannot design wheels, they look absolutely dog shit. Whereas these wheels have a beautiful quality to them and a design to them that Tesla don't have. And I'm not, I'm not like bad mouthing Tesla before all of the uh, Tesla disciples start mauling me. Tesla has changed the game without a doubt. Tesla's drivetrains are, um, are almost unrivaled, but this is the bit that Tesla need to learn a bit better. And things like the brakes, things like the suspension, they're, they're, they'll get there and they'll get, in, they'll get there very quickly, but that's what legacy manufacturers, as people like to call them, that's where these guys excel. What's weird is I am in, you know, a sensible passenger car. I'm in a, I'm in a, I keep wanting to call it a saloon, but it's not really a saloon. I'm in a mid-sized hatch, luxury hatchback that doesn't look sporty as such, doesn't look sensible, and yet it's got this sort of race tune harshly race tuned damping going on that seems to jar with the rest of the car because the rest of the interior and stuff wants to be a bit more easy listening. Oh there we go. It feel like I thought we were gonna have a little incident so it's it's 
it's pulled, it's pulled me in so tight that I feel like I'm wearing a corset. There we go, it's released me. Because it's a Polestar um, Volvo Group car, safety is is, is, is an absolute um, tantamount. And that's why it weighs, they say, that's why it weighs more than, say, the Tesla equivalent by about 200 kilos. There's a lot of safety kit going on in here. A lot. Plus, obviously, batteries plus paramotors. Now, the Polestar 2 is nippy. 4.7 seconds to 62. So it's, it's, it's right there with the I-Pace Jag, but it's down on performance compared to the Tesla Model 3 performance. Remember, there's three Tesla Model 3s, and this sort of sits in the middle price-wise. This comes in at about 47, 48,000 pounds. So what do you get for your 47, 48, 49,000 pounds? Well, you've got a 78 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, that consists of, I think, 78 modules, pouch cells made by LG Chem, so they're Korean cells. And they live, like I said before, in a T configuration inside here. That provides you with 292 miles of range, um, WLTP. In the real world, you can expect to probably shave I don't know, 15 to 20 miles off that, depending on your driving style, geography of the land, preheating, blah, 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 all the usual EV um, differences. But what's really, really nice about this car is it doesn't have, I'll show you here, it doesn't have a sport mode. So up here, you've got four icons. If I press the car icon, you've got drive, assist, charge, and more. Now the drive, these are your driving options. You have the steering feel, three adjustments of steering feel. I've got it in the firmest setting because I actually prefer a, a kind of a firmer steering wheel. I don't like a light, numb feeling wheel. And then you've got one pedal drive, which is either off, low or standard. I've got it on standard and it's really aggressive. Like in the most aggressive, um, I'd say compared to the most aggressive of the BMW i3. And I've got creep on, which is like to simulate an automatic gearbox creeping when you take off the brake. And then you've got electronic stability control, sport mode, which allows for a bit of slippage. Remember, this is a four-wheel drive car. Polestar have said they're going to do a single motor version. So a bit like when Tesla brought out the T3, um, it came out originally with a dual motor, but there is a single motor version that's cheaper. They'll be the same with this. And then that is it. There's no like sport mode. There's no hyper speed nonsense. There's no app for guffing that I can find. Then you've got all the assistance. Now, obviously, being Volvo's parent company, um, Polestar is under the Geely uh, owned umbrella. Geely being a huge um, Chinese company who also own Lotus and the London Electric Vehicle Company. They're big on safety really big on safety so this has a lot of things uh, driver aids roadside information collision avoidance blind spot assist all of those sorts of things which you can turn on and turn off the Polestar charging menu here you can choose your charge limit again it's quite simple it's nowhere near as nerdy as a lot of other EVs you can choose your method of, of charging um, and you can see either on there and on here on the right hand side the status of the batteries and this screen in front of you here it's 11 inches long that is or wide um, the binnacle the graphics are really minimalist playing it down each time it's not it's not too fancy like a lot of the graphics on like ja a lot of Japanese EVs and things like that it's not like that it's it's just some simple bar charts and then I can change the configuration on the steering wheel. There you go, I can put my nav in there like that. Um, and then the other menu on the tablet is your apps. So I've got my phone, I've got my Google Maps here, I've got my media player, I've got my driver performance which shows me how I'm doing, how I'm averaging, how I'm doing right now, and my trip counter, that sort of stuff. There's there's some cubby holes either side of this high center console. There's 
cordless or wireless charging down in there with a couple of USB-C chargers. It started to rain. But yeah, 292 miles of range um, at best, depending on how you drive it. And because this has got the performance pack, it's on 20 inch wheels. And the first thing I have noticed with this car, all of the controls are very responsive and quite taut. Um, the car has a very supple ride. It is a firm ride, F much, much firmer than I was expecting. Yes, you can adjust uh, the, the Olin shocks on this, this optional model, but you can't do it electronically at the push of a button. You have to actually get spanners out. Um, so according to, to Polestar's chassis engineer who I was talking to, they have really, really designed this car with performance in mind. So I would suggest you only option the performance pack if you're thinking of taking the car on kind of track days or you like to push a car really hard. Teslas often have terrible brakes as standard. It's known they've got awful brakes. They're under braked most of the time. This addresses that problem with the huge Brembo calipers. But to be honest, I'm hardly ever using them because of the one pedal driving. So I went out for a quick drive and because it's a summer evening, I thought we'd get a bit of sunshine and some low, low, low sun. No, we get rain. So I've come in and huddled under a tree and I'm going to talk about the front end. The front end is really nice. It's kind of shallow and it looks really wide. It's got these creases either side of the bonnet, which I think make it look very, very kind of masculine and handsome. This grille is a pole star kind of key hallmark. They're these squares. It's actually hardly got any apertures and there's active cooling in there to let air in for the radiators and the liquid cooled battery packs as and when. But it also cleverly disguises the radar and the cameras which are around about there. You see the, uh, the logo here, not chrome, keeping it nice on the down low in that way that the Scandinavians are so good at. I really like that. It is a bit of a big bonnet and it is quite, I guess, quite a conventional looking car, but you can see there's the sort of Thor's hammer style or they're either Thor's hammer or the tail of a dolphin. I can't work it out, but you've got this design language here, which is similar to Volvo. Under the front, I'm gonna pop the bonnet because I actually haven't looked under here yet. So similar to the Tesla 3, um, it does have a little bit of storage under here. You can't see any of the motors or anything like that. You just got screen wash there. And then you've got this little, very shallow, I think it's 35 liters of storage here, mostly for your cable really. This is your, your cable tidy area. It's enough actually. It's a little bit better than I thought. And you've got the um, tire inflation kit down there. So that's where all your cable nonsense goes and the back can be kept, that really big hatch can be kept for your normal practical shopping stuff. What I like about this is I think it looks more expensive than it really is. One thing I think about a Tesla is if you're buying a high-end Tesla 3 performance, it's 55 grand. This with all the kit on is, is, is just under that, but I actually think this looks more expensive. Look at it. Look at it, it looks better than any Audi. It's a brilliant looking thing. Charging, right. Here's where you charge on the side here. It'll charge up to 150 kilowatts of rapid charger using the CCS. If it's totally empty, which it never will be, it'll go zero to 80% in 40 minutes. The other thing that Polestar have done is they've teamed up with plug sharing, which is a Europe wide public network. And using this little RFID card, you can swipe and use thousands of different charge points just to make it a little bit easier. That's the key fob. It's a bit cheap and nasty, but Polestar promise that you'll be able to use your phone soon to unlock and start the car. Anyway, let's have a sit in the back. Okay, first time I've sat in the back of the Polestar 2. First thing I notice is these seats here are higher than the seats at the front. And I'm guessing that's because underneath here is half the battery pack, the other half being down there, as I said before. And that's why you've got this quite high transmission tunnel. So the person in the middle at the back is gonna have a pretty unfair hump to deal with. So they should be a child really. 
But apart from that, when I get in and sit, this has got the panoramic roof, I thought it would feel a bit claustrophobic because the doors are very, very high. The sill line is really high. And this pillar back here, this, this C pillar is quite dense for the driver, but it's really nice because I can see, I'm well over the back of this seat. I can see well over. Sorry, I was just on social media. So here's what I think. This is what I think about the car. This is clearly a driver focused EV. It's more down the road of the Jaguar I-Pace, I think, than the Tesla Model 3. And by that, I mean, it's got more driver orientated steering and suspension and brakes. I actually think when this is put next to the I-Pace, it's priced really well. Even with all the performance kit on it, it's still probably nearly 10 grand less than an I-Pace. It depends what your priority is. If you want sheer range, then a Tesla Model 3 will probably win. But the thing I like about the Polestar 2 is the package. I've said it before. It's a really strong package. I love the design. Aesthetically, it knocks spots off the Tesla inside and out to me. 292 miles of range uh, WLTP. It's pretty good. Good, strong network of dealers from Volvo. I think as a first effort, a full EV first effort from them, I think it's wonderful. And remember, I think this could be the best quality car that's ever been made in China. It's a Chinese Scandinavian mashup. As is always the case, thank you so much for watching uh, this episode of Car Pervert. If you haven't already subscribed, I urge you to press subscribe, click the bell icon, and then whenever I upload a new video, you will be sure to see it as soon as possible. Um, I also welcome comments. Have you ordered one of these? Have you considered uh, buying one of these or looking at a different alternative? Anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you ever so much.